the central limit theorem. So this first problem says if women's heights are normally distributed with a mean of 63.6 .6 and a standard deviation of 2.5, if one woman is randomly selected, what is the probability that that woman's height is greater than 72 inches? 72 inches is 6 foot, so we're saying what is the probability that a randomly selected woman is taller than 6 feet? So if we have a normal distribution, and we have the average woman's height's 63.6, .6, and we're going greater than 70, so that's going to be over here. So we are finding the probability that a randomly selected woman's height is greater than 72 inches. Sorry, 72 inches. So we're going to go to our Excel spreadsheet, um, and we're going to put in our mean of 63.6 .6 and our standard deviation of 2.5 and greater than 72 and the probability of that's pretty darn small it's something like so 0 0.00039 so we times that by a hundred if we want to turn that into a percentage so that would be point zero point zero four percent if 16 women are randomly selected, what is the probability that their mean height is greater than 70 inches? This time, remember, with this type of distribution, it's going to be much more narrow. So it's going to be something like this. We're going to have that average. But this is going to be a much more steep and narrow distribution. So this should be an even smaller percentage because, again, this is going to be even tinier out here. So remember that if we have 16 random women, this is this is going to be... Um, our n, we're going to be changing our standard deviation because we're doing a sampling mean. It's going to be the old one divided by the square root of um, our sample size. So it's going to be 2.5 divided by the square root of 16. And so 2.5 divided by the square root of 16. Our new standard deviation for our sampling mean is 0 0.625. So I'm going to go and we're going to find, it's going to be the same probability. It's the probability that x is greater than 72, which is going to be, we just go to our Excel spreadsheet and we change that standard deviation from 2.5 to 0.625. And this becomes, it's 0, right? And let's talk about what that means. So that probability is it's going to be 0%. Because we're trying to select a woman who is taller than 6 foot tall. Uh, 6 foot. And it's, it's pretty unlikely to select a single woman who's over 6 foot tall. But it's even more unlikely that I select 16 women, average up their heights, and their average ends up being 6 feet tall or taller, right? So that's why this population became even smaller um, when we average 16 women's heights up. A ski gondola carries skiers to the top of a mountain. Its maximum carry capacity is 12, uh, 12 people or 2,004 pounds. Now if you take that total weight limit and divide it by 12, that's about 167 people on average. Because men tend to weigh more than women, a worst case scenario would be 12 passengers who are all men. Men have weights that are normally distributed with a mean of 172 and a standard deviation of 29. Find the probability that the weight of one randomly selected male will be greater than 167. So we are going to draw our distribution. We know our mean is 172, and we are finding the probability of a value of their weights be a single person's weight being greater than 167. So probability of x greater than 167, and that would be, we're going to go to our Excel spreadsheet, and we're going to do, our average is 172, our standard deviation is 29, and it's 167, we're doing greater than 167. So this would be 56.8%. Now, find the probability that 12 randomly selected men will have a weight, a total weight more than 2,004 pounds. That is, find the probability that the mean weight of these 12 men will be greater than 167. So again, it's a similar distribution, but it's going to be much more steep and narrow. So it's going to look like this. And then we're going to still have that 172 in here. Um, 167 is going to be something right here. And we're going to be going this direction. 
And so remember now since we have a sample and we're going to average them up, we're going to change the standard deviation by doing the old standard deviation divided by the square root of n. This time I have 12 people randomly selected. So it's going to be the old standard deviation, which is 29, divided by the square root of n is 12. And when we do 29 divided by the square root of 12, we get 8.37. So our standard deviation here is going to be 8.37. We're still finding the probability that x is greater than 167. So we just change this to 8.37 and that probability goes to 72.5 percent. So which of these probabilities is more relevant to this situation? Let's think about it. Are we more concerned about a single individual being over 167 pounds? That should be a 7. Or a group of people being over 167 pounds? It would be part B because a group, not a single person is going to make this overweight, but a group of people, a group of 12 men, would make the gondola go over capacity. All right, the last one we're going to take a look at here, it says the average shot shoe size for a male is 10 with a standard deviation of 1. Find the probability that an individual shoe size is between 9 and 11. So we've got a normal distribution. 10 is the average. We're finding the probability that an individual shoe size will be between 9 and 11. So we'll want to use the in-between tab here. So we're going to use the in-between tab. So between 9 and 11 oops, 9 and 11, with a mean of 10 and a standard deviation of 1. What do we find? 68.3%. So the probability that it's between 9 and 11 is 63.4%. Is that what that said? 63? Oh, I'm sorry, 68.3%. 68 Now it says find the probability that the mean shoe size for 50 randomly selected adults will be between 9 and 11. So we're going to take 50 guys' shoe sizes, add them up, divided by 50, see how many we have. We're going to change the standard deviation here. How we're going to do that is we're going to take the old standard deviation was 1 and divide it by the square root of 50, which is going to give us 0.14, let's do three decimal places, 0 0.141. So again, this is going to be a much more narrow distribution, but we're going to be between 9 and 11. We're going to shade the stuff in the middle. This is a terribly drawn distribution. I apologize for my bad art skills today. Um, same probability as what we had before. We're finding the probability that x is between 9 and 11. But this time I need to make sure I change that standard deviation to 0.141. And we get 100%. Why would that be? Why would that be 100%? Let's talk about that. Um, the reason is because let's think about the empirical rule. This is a terribly drawn distribution, so I'm actually going to redraw this and do a better job with it and actually go back to that idea of an empirical rule. So we've got 9 in the middle, right? If I start counting up by standard deviations, if I go up one standard deviation, I'm sorry, the average is 10, right? So the average would be 10, and if I go up one, I'm at 10.141. And then if I go up another one, I'm at 
I'm at 10.282, right? And if I go up another standard deviation, I'm at 10.423. Similarly, if I go down, 10 minus 0.141 is 9.859. Go down again. 9.718. And I go down one more time. I'm at 9.577. So, you think about this, and 9 would be like somewhere over here, and 11 would be somewhere over here, and if we go in between, we're going to end up shading this entire distribution. So if you average 50 guys' shoe sizes up, you're going to have 100% of the time, it's going to average between 9 and 11, because again, even if you have somebody who has a size 13 shoe, you're throwing them into a pile with a bunch of other people, you've shrunk that standard deviation so much that it's definitely going to be within that value. So now, if you work for a shoe company that sold shoes, which distribution would we be more relevant. It actually would be part A here because I'm selling shoes to an individual. If I was looking at this distribution right here, what this would tell me is, well, I don't, I only need to make basically between sizes 9 to 11 because I'm going to have 100% of my population in there. Do I ever need to make a size 13 shoe? Well, if I were using that distribution, I would think no. But I'm not selling shoes for a group of people. I'm selling people shoes to an individual. So this is telling me you need to work with that individual distribution, the probability that an individual's shoe size. So that's the one that would be the better distribution here.